been an incredible series. Friends, when we came into this year, we came into a year with a prophetic theme. And that theme was full steam in 2015. But when we, when we come into a year with a theme like that, we're, we're never sure. In fact, it's not often until the following year that we've really start to understand the significance of the series. And then when we come in, uh, into a year, and when we come to a series like the one we've just done, again, we're never really sure exactly what God wants to say to us. And as it evolves with different speakers, and we get a sense of what God is saying to us as a family, as a corporate group. But my question for you today is, what is God saying to you? Over these last six weeks, as you've heard different messages and on different themes, what is God saying to you personally? Out of it all, when you distill it all down, what, what is God saying to you? So what I'd like to do today is just take a moment to, to recap on, on the topics over the last few weeks and perhaps share a little bit of uh, the impact that's had on my own life as well. I'd like to begin by reading a couple of verses uh, from Romans chapter 12, reading from the NIV, Romans 12 verses 1 and 2, because one of the, one of the pressures that, that will never leave us as Christ followers is the pressures of this world in which we live. Now, we know that as a follower of Jesus Christ, we are no longer part of this world, but nevertheless, until Christ returns or until we go to be with him, we are in this world, and we are continually subjected to its pressures. And we're reminded of that, of that in what Paul writes in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, which, which I'll now read. Therefore, Paul writes, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. So we have this constant pressure of the world trying to to squeeze us, which is another way of translating what Paul has written here, trying to squeeze us into its mold. Now you and I know that the, that the work of the Spirit of God in our lives is to transform us for sure and conform us to a mold, but it's not the mold of this world. The work of the Spirit of God in our lives is to, is to restore in us the image of Christ. To remake us, if you like, in, in his image. To conform us to his likeness. And yet we have constantly this pressure from this world in which we live that will, will try and conform us and squeeze us into the mold of its desires the mold of its cravings and its gratifications, the mold of its patterns and its principles and, and its priorities. And I was really challenged by what Shirley shared with us a couple of weeks ago now. She reminded us that this, that this pressure of the world in which we live is not going to diminish. And she she likened it to a darkness, and she said, the darkness is getting darker. Now, Shirley is well-traveled. Shirley is, is well-studied in the Word of God. And when she, when she shares something like that, it's worth taking notice of. But what shocked me more was her observation. She said that the eyes of Christians, and she said, my concern is that the, that the eyes of of Christians are becoming accustomed to the darkness. Now, you may not have been here two weeks ago to hear her say that, but, but when she said that, that, it shocked me. I said, Lord, would that never be? That I would become so accustomed to the darkness of this world in which I live 
that my, my eyes become accustomed to it. Now I know that the enemy would love to extinguish the lights which you and I carry. And so I hope that through this series, what we have tried to do in part anyway through this series is to ensure that that light that you and I carry in an ever-darkening world is never going to lose its intensity or never lose its impact. And I hope that through this series, it has built into your life an even greater rock solidness that you are more established in Jesus Christ today than you were six weeks ago, that your life is more solidly founded in Jesus Christ than it was a few weeks ago. Because friends, in an ever-darkening world, you and I are going to need a rock-solid quality to our lives like we've never needed before. And I hope that through this series, we've, we've tried to give you at least six keys to a rock-solid life. We began with that, that key of faith, rock-solid faith. And Pastor David described that, that kind of faith not as something that is self-generated, as if you and I needed to somehow uh, generate this kind of faith toward God, but he described it as that gift which actually comes from God himself. It's actually his faith that he gives to us. And it's the a, it's a kind of faith that we will activate and, and engage, not so that we will acquire more, but that we will acquire him. And it's when faith is activated toward God and towards knowing God, in that kind of way, friends, faith finds its highest purpose. It doesn't find its highest purpose in, in wanting to get more, like better health or better circumstances, although it's appropriate to use that. But the highest purpose for which we can engage, the faith that God has given us, is to acquire Him. He is our prize. He is our highest pursuit that we might know him in the fullness of who he is and that we might know him in the intimacy of first-hand experiential relationship that we're not having to depend on somebody else's faith somebody else's knowledge of God some second-hand experience but that we might have a first-hand knowing of God Rock solid faith. And we moved on to rock solid thinking. Rock solid thinking is that thinking that is informed by the wisdom of God. It's thinking that is renewed in the Holy Spirit. It's, it's thinking that is washed in the Word of God. It is thinking that is consistent with the mind of Christ. And I loved this little statement that Pastor Linda said. She said, Rock-solid thinking is loving God with every thought. Now, I don't know how many thoughts go through your head in a given day and how many that go through your head at night. Some of the thoughts that go through our minds are, are not welcome thoughts. But friends, I long for that day when every thought, with every thought, I'm able to love God. When every thought is focused on Him, when every thought is about Him and about the things that matter most to Him, there's a wonderful list in Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, about the things that, that can occupy our thought life. But rock solid thinking, friends, is that kind of thought life and those thought patterns that are absolutely founded and grounded in Jesus Christ. What He has done for us, who He is in the fullness and the magnificence of his being. I mean, that alone would occupy every thought of every day, every waking moment, and, and all of our sleep life, just thinking about who Jesus is and the wonder of his being, what he's done for us. 
What's important to him? How he, how he thinks about you and I. Rock solid thinking. Anchoring our thought life to Jesus Christ. And friend, it's, it's that kind of thinking that Paul writes about here in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. That, that constant renewal process that is the key to a transformed life. And from rock solid thinking, we moved on to rock solid family. To discover that rock solid family is not one that is picture perfect or problem free, which is a relief to many of us. But it's a family that is built on, on the exact foundation which our Heavenly Father has built his family on. His family is, is built on a quality of love where a life was poured out and laid down. Friends, rock solid family is families that are built on that kind of self sacrifice. And we talked about how God has an entry point into your family. Now, your family may not be what you want it to be, but friends, God has an entry point into your family, and it's you. The kingdom of God, the presence of God, and the power of God have an entry point into your very family. Whatever circumstances it's in right now, God is an entry point, and it's you. So you can be that rock-solid person in your family. As a follower of Jesus Christ with a, a life anchored on him, you can be a rock-solid person in your family. You can be that person of strength that your family needs right now. You can bring the hope that you carry in your heart into your family right now. You can bring all that God has deposited in your life as a follower of Jesus Christ that gives to your life such strength. You can bring that into your family right now. You can be the rock of refuge in your family. You can be that one to whom others will run. When the storms of life come against family life, you can be that one to which others will run to find comfort and shelter in those times. You can be that rock of refuge in your family. Being rock solid in your family. And friends, we can only do that as we build our lives upon that sure and solid rock of Jesus Christ. Rock solid family moved on to rock solid relationships. And, and Mark uh, Banyard shared with us and, and he began by, by prefacing everything he said, went on to say about relationships by saying there is our first allegiance is to Jesus Christ, to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He talked about kingdom relationships and how every other relationship flows out from that primary relationship that we have. It's one of allegiance to the king. And from that first allegiance, other relationships come. And friends, we, our relationships flow out of a personal revelation of the Father heart of our Heavenly Father. Understanding who we are in relation to him. Understanding ourselves in relation to our heavenly father. And that is one of the most significant personal revelations that we can have. And if we are to have health in our relational world, it comes out of that revelation. That we have a heavenly father who loves us. And by God's grace, by his mercy, we have been reborn again by the Spirit of God into his family. And we are called the children of God, sons and daughters of the living God. And friends, that reality, that revelation brings into our lives a, a rock-solid quality without which we struggle through life without identity and purpose. That's what we find in relationship with our Heavenly Father. Relationships that are grounded in knowing Him and knowing ourselves by revelation. Well, friends, if, if it was to get any easier, it wasn't because Shirley Carpenter turned up the following Sunday, opened up the Word of God as she does to Matthew chapter 25 and uh, shared with us how often she's 
uh, criticised for, for not bringing a positive message. Well, the text she chose for that day wasn't a particularly easy one if you wanted to bring a positive mes- message, but it was one of those life transformational messages. And she shared a bit from the build-up of that in Matthew 24 and then into chapter 25 where she spoke powerfully from the story of the, the five wise and the five foolish virgins. But... Friends, she challenged us to examine our relationship with Holy Spirit, to do a self-examination of how we relate to Holy Spirit. How healthy is that relationship? What are we doing with the Spirit of God that has been poured into us? And she challenged us, are we, are we just doing enough? Do we have that kind of just enough mentality, just enough to get by? Just enough praying to get by. Just enough Bible study, reading to get by. Is our spirituality just enough to get by? Or is it out of an overflow of that oil of God's spirit which he's poured into our hearts? I don't know how you found that message. She challenged us about whether or not we were awake or asleep as I recall. Probably woke a few of us up that morning. And she explained it this way, that we can be busy about life, but not really accomplishing anything of eternal significance. Busy about life, but not accomplishing anything of eternal significance. As she went through the list, to me, she was describing a spiritually deprived life a spiritually malnourished life, a life dependent on others for their spirituality, for their spiritual life, rather than going to the source themselves. How willing are we to pay the price for getting our own oil and spending that time with the Lord, being renewed in Him and receiving that oil that He wants to constantly be renewing in our lives through the indwelling presence of the Spirit. A very challenging message. How healthy is our relationship with Holy Spirit? Last week, Pastor David talked about rock-solid prayer. Prayer that flows naturally out of a relationship of knowing God, knowing His ways, knowing His will, knowing His word. Prayer that flows naturally from the heart. Because that kind of prayer, friends, it's, I know perhaps in those earlier years, many of us learned prayers that were uh, already scripted for us and it's not inappropriate for us to learn that way. But friend, the point, the time comes when we must mature and, and we move into a, a realm of communication with God and with heaven that comes out of a love relationship. A prayer from the, where it comes from our hearts where we connect with the heart of God and reflect his heart back to him and align our own hearts with his heart, with his will, with his purposes, praying that flows from the heart, where the throne of God is approached only after we have done all that we can to be reconciled to others. And if you're here in the second service, you heard how Pastor David shared so much of his own experience in regard to that and how how vital it is if we are going to approach the throne of grace to only do so after we have spent time and and seeking to do all we can anyway to be reconciled to those relationships. We find it sometimes so easy to get into that vertical relationship and to come to that place of prayer when things on the horizontal plane are in disarray. That kind of praying doesn't capture the attention of heaven. Praying that captures the attention of heaven is praying from that position of being free from the prison of unforgiveness where we have got off that chair of judgment. And this is the kind of rock-solid prayer, friends. In a world that is getting darker, this is the kind of rock-solid praying that will be necessary. Jesus 
reminded us that while we would love everything to be getting brighter and better as time goes on, that is not reality. And the time will come, he said, when they, do, they will do to you what they have done to me. The world rejected him. The world abused him, persecuted him, and hated him. And friends, you and I are going to find that we're going to need this kind of rock-solid praying where we only make our approach to heaven after we have done all we can to be reconciled to those around us or certainly to remove ourselves from that place of judgment. So in wrapping all this up, what can we say? And as I've listened to those messages like you and taken my notes like you, it seems to me to bring us all back to one person, the person of Jesus Christ. We talked about that rock solid faith and we've talked about rock solid thinking and family life and rock solid relationships, living in the spirit and prayer. But friends, it brings us back to no one else than Jesus Christ. Because whatever we want to build in our lives, unless we build it on something that is rock solid, it will not stand as the days get darker. In the intro video, what we portrayed to you was a, was a very violent picture. Now, Henry's not a violent man, but we asked him to, to portray a role that this world plays. And it can be a very violent one at times where stuff does get smashed. But friends, the, the world's impact and the world's pressures don't always come to us in, in such a, a frontal kind of attack. It often comes to us in a far more insidious and subtle way. And if we are going to be able to withstand the pressures of this world that would want to squeeze us back into its mold, then we're going to need this kind of rock-solid faith. The only life that will be able to withstand the constant hammering of this world is a life anchored to Jesus Christ, a faith that is directed towards knowing him, a thinking that is renewed in the wisdom of heaven, a family life into which the kingdom of God and the knowledge of God is brought near, relationships that will flow out of our first allegiance to Jesus Christ, to a spirituality that is controlled by the Spirit, led by Holy Spirit, lives that are absolutely resplendent with the fruit of the Spirit, to a prayer life that comes out of a grateful heart and the intimacy of relationship. So friends, I don't know what, what this series has meant to you personally. Today we draw it to a close. We're going to move on to a new series in a week or two. But we don't want to move on without at least helping you to get in touch with what God is saying to you personally. What will you gain out of the series? What is it that God has deposited in your heart that means that you are a far more rock-solid person today? That, you are, that your faith today is far more rock-solid than it was a few weeks ago? That your thinking, your thought life, thought processes are far more rock solid today than they were a few weeks ago. That your relationships, that your family life, that your prayer life, that your spiritual life, in fact that every aspect of your life is far more rock solid today than it was a few weeks ago. If it is, then that's an encouragement to those of us who stand here and try our best to exhort you and to impart what, what God has given us. If it is, then all credit to you for persevering and pushing through and doing the, 
the hard work that has to be done at times for us to grow and mature in God. If it is, all credit to the Spirit of God, because friends, it's He who works in us to ensure that when days are are darkening, that we will stand. When Andrew led us in that song today, it was very timely in the sense because, friends, we will stand. Even though the days are darkening and, and we're pre warned about that, it shouldn't surprise us. And even though all kinds of shakings are happening around us, it shouldn't surprise us. But, friends, we know that we will stand not because of who we are and the strength that we have, but because we have one who has already won the victory. So we stand in him and we stand in his victory. And friends, that's why it's, it's so important through a series like this that we, al- that we allow what God is doing to bring us back to Jesus back deepening that relationship with him, deepening our intimacy with him, because at the end of the day, he's what we have. And he's all that we have. Andrew, are you here anywhere? (laughs) I love that boy. Just as much as my own son. Um... It's, Andrew's just going to play. Look, friends, before we finish, I just want to give you a moment. Um, I've tried to just call back to mind this morning some of the things that have been shared. You may have other things written down in your notebooks, those of you who bring them in, in your devices, those of you who are more up with the technology. Can I just encourage you to take a moment, maybe through what's been shared today or what you've written down from the last few weeks, just take a little moment, go back to that, And just connect again with what God's speaking to your own heart in regard to being rock solid. So we just take a moment to do that and then we'll wrap it up. For we trust in our God. stand together Lord we stand this morning we stand as the people of God the children of God to make a declaration Lord to our own hearts that we will stand we will not be shaken and Lord we don't stand in our own strength this morning it's not the strength of our will it's not the strength of our resolve it's not by our own power God but it's only through you It's only being found in Christ. It's only being through your unfailing love, God, that we will stand. So God, we renew our commitment to you, our allegiance to Jesus Christ. We can, we we renew our commitment to you, Lord, to stand strong, to stand strong in, in faith, God, to stand strong in prayer to stand strong in our families. God, to stand strong in the Spirit. Oh, to be rock solid, God. God, will you seal now everything that you have done in our hearts over these last few weeks through the teaching of your Word and the inspiration of your Spirit. Let it be sealed now, God, to your praise and to your glory. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, we will go from this place and we will continue to shine your light. Even though around us the place may be dark, Lord, and growing darker, we will be your light. Continue to shine in us and through us to your glory, oh God. Yes, Lord, to you be all the praise and all the glory. And all God's people said, Amen.